This section is called phase relations. We learned in the previous section from the diagram on the left that soil is made up of solid particles with water and or air in the voids. In order to define some useful quantities, we use a phase diagram as shown on the right. We conveniently separate all the air, water and solid soil particles into their own blocks. The volume terms are shown on the left and the mass terms are shown on the right. The subscripts used are as follows, T for total, S for solids, W for water, A for air and V for voids. The mass of air, M subscript A, is negligible. We start by defining a number of density terms. Bulk density is the total mass MT divided by the total volume VT. The bulk density is usually determined in the laboratory from cylindrical samples of soil. Dry density is the mass of solids MS divided by the total volume VT. We'll use this soon in the, in the compaction section of the course. In general, we prefer to use unit weights than densities in soil mechanics. The unit weight is the density times the acceleration due to gravity G. Or alternatively, the unit weight is weight divided by volume. Bulk unit weights and dry unit weights can be calculated. The specific gravity Gs is the relative density of the solid particles themselves. In other words, the density of the particles divided by the density of water. We have one important mass definition, and that's water content, defined as the mass of water divided by the mass of solids, Mw divided by Ms. A common mistake is to calculate water content as Mw divided by the total mass Mt, and this is incorrect. As a result of the correct definition, it is possible for the water content to exceed 100%. Some typical values of water content are given. Dublin boulder clay, 10 to 15%, which is low. Organic silts, such as those found in Belfast and Cork, 35 to 90%. Calc tuffa, which is a cal calcareous material found in Galway, 150 to 200% and peat, typically 400 to a whopping 2,000%. 2,000% means that for every one gram of solid you have, there is 20 grams of water. The following volume ratios are also very useful. The void ratio E is defined as the volume of voids divided by the volume of solids. The porosity is the volume of voids over the total volume, which in reality is the first cousin of the void ratio. The void ratio is used a lot in soil mechanics as a gauge of compressibility. The higher the void ratio, the more compressible a soil is. The air content A is defined as the volume of air divided by the total volume. And the degree of saturation SR is the volume of water divided by the volume of voids. For a dry soil, SR equals zero, while for a saturated soil, SR equals one, or 100%. We'll see in the effective stress section of the course how SR varies above and below the groundwater table. In total, we've defined 10 new terms, either densities, mass ratios or volume ratios. It would be useful to be able to relate them to each other through a new set of formulas. To do this, we simplify the phase diagram by letting the volume of solids Vs equal to 1, as shown in red. The volume of voids V, V, then equals the void ratio E. The mass of solids can be written in the simpler format 
rho wgs because vs is 1. The mass of water is therefore w times rho wgs. And the volume of water is its mass over its density, which gives w times gs. Finally, the degree of saturation SR is equal to VW over VV, which works out to be WGS over E. Therefore, we have the equation that ESR is equal to WGS, linking four quantities in one simple equation. This is one of the most useful equations in soil mechanics. For a saturated soil with SR equals 1, E can be calculated simply as W times GS. Using the same starting point, the following expressions for air content A on bulk density row can be derived. And it's worthwhile performing these derivations as an exercise. <laughs>